Hello there, my name is Keith. I am joined today by two of the lovely members of the Ottawa Red Blacks cheer and dance team, Rupa and Danielle. I'm very excited to have them here today. Uh, before we get into today's interview, I want to issue a quick apology to one of my guests from last week. Alisa, a member of the dance team, had joined me with, along with Stephanie, and I accidentally, at the end of the interview, called her Alyssa. As somebody who doesn't like being called Kevin or Kurt, no, it's Keith, I, I, I feel bad, so please accept my apology. Perhaps the Ottawa Red Blacks as a whole can make it up to her by just giving her what she wants, which is the ability to sing the national anthem at one of the upcoming games, but the campaign is rolling and hopefully the Red Blacks are listening. But ladies and gentlemen, today, Rupa, Danielle, thank you so much for taking the time to join me today. I appreciate it. No so, um, ladies, let's start off with what everybody in the city is still talking about. The upset of the century, the, the biggest win in Red Blacks history, defeating the Calgary Stampeders, the reigning Grey Cup champions last week at TD Place. You ladies were on the field. I was in the stands. You were closer than I was. So jealous. Tell me about it. What was, what was the feeling like on the field? Um, it was great. Um, usually at some games, like well, half the crowd leaves if it's really close or if they can tell that um, the other team's going to win, they leave. But I think a lot of people stayed to watch the end. That was great because at the end, everyone jumped out of their seats and we were jumping around high-fiving people. And it was just great that it was like a full audience there to watch. We were so happy about it. Yeah. I think it was a, it was an awesome experience to see the fans so excited and so happy all the way to the end, um, basically beating the beating the Stampeders. I mean, you know, they're the Grey Cup champions, and like it's just, hey, yeah. it just it feels good. It feels good to be cheering in front of a crowd, especially. Um, I remember when we ended in our pod, we had a group of Stampeders fans right in front of us, and you know, cheering back and forth, and it made it so it made the experience so much more. Fun and mm -hmm. sensational, and um, oh, I just—it was just such an exciting game. All I can say was there was just so much excitement in the air from everybody, from the players, from the crowd, from us. Like we were just—I've never watched a football game and been so excited about it. And I grew up watching football, and like this, this was like beyond a different. It, it was definitely one of those games. It was definitely a nail-biting game, and there were so many things that were happening back and forth where there was so much emotion. So for to come out on the winning end of it was fantastic. Now, I'm very excited to have you ladies. You're both, you're both very lovely and I appreciate you taking the time, but you're members of the cheer team. So the last time I had members from the cheer team here, it was actually your captains. I had uh, Jenny and Alex here. And since then I've had uh, members from the, from the dance team. So can we just do a quick refresher for those who this might be the first time they're watching this? What's the difference between the cheer and the dance team? Um, so with cheerleading, we're we're more uh, we're more of the acrobats. We okay. uh, we throw people around. We do backflips. We do all that fun stuff. Like I'm sure, like the dancers, they can also some of them probably can whip out a backflip. No word of lie. Like some of those girls are so amazing. Like they're all amazing, but some of them just like have hidden talents, and yeah. it's great. Um, so they they dance, okay. and they're very very talented dancers. Like I wish I was that that graceful. Okay. And I'm, <laughs> let me tell you, yeah. I'm really not. Yeah. Um, so the difference, the main difference is that like we do like the cheering, we're the louder ones. We definitely, yeah, we just throw people around. That's yeah. it's a lot of fun, and uh, I'm sure like I love to dance. I also danced growing up, uh, not competitively. Let me tell you, I'm not graceful, okay. but <laughs> I dance and I and I do um, I do like the dancing part of it. We do some on the cheer side as well. Okay. Mm -hmm. um, I would say that's the main, main difference. Do you have anything that pretty much covers it? Okay. And then there's the difference with the high heel boots and the oh, yeah. Yeah, 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 the boots yeah. and the cheer shoes. That's yeah. probably one of the easiest <laughs> distinctions. Yeah. Boots, okay, your dance. Um, you mentioned something. Now, I'm familiar, I'm becoming more familiar with the technology, uh, sorry, the terminology, because I'm spending more time with you, ladies and gentlemen. But for those who don't know, can you explain what a pod is? Oh, um, so a pod is just like a group of people. Okay. So basically, like we have one big group, and we separate into four group, different groups, and we just call it a pod. Okay, excellent. So when you're looking at upon the field and you see one group, you know, maybe to the to the right or the left of you, that's a pod. Yes. Okay. Okay. Excellent. Now um, let's let's. Uh, I want to get to know you ladies better today. Can you tell me? Um, and Daniel, we'll start with you. Can you tell me like what got you into cheerleading and like how long you've been doing it for? Um, well, I started in gymnastics, but I was too young to do it competitively, so my coach recommended that I do cheerleading. And I wasn't into it at first, but after that I got so into it, so I've been doing it for 10 years now. 
Um, I did competitive for eight years, and last year I joined my uh, university team, and I'm continuing that again this year as well as doing Red Blacks cheerleading. Okay. That's awesome. That's awesome. Uh, Rupa, how about yourself? Um, I've been cheerleading for 15 years. Um, and what got me into it is actually a, quite a funny story what like initially started me on cheerleading. I started with gymnastics when I was a kid and um, my mom told me, you know, do you want to do competitive? And I said, no, because my brother was a competitive gymnast. He was a gold medalist. Okay. And uh, so my, my mom was like, do you want to do competitive? I guess I was four or something. I was like, no. And I feel like it was the best decision I ever made. Because that's what four, you wanted to do. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. At four, um, I was playing with Lego, just so you know. Okay. <laughs> she asked me at four, like, if I wanted to be a competitive gymnast. And I said, no. So I was a gymnastics recreationally. And then around when I was 10, that's when Bring It On came out. And I don't know why my mom let me watch this movie. There's a lot of swear words in it. But I guess I didn't really understand it. I was just too busy watching, like, the cheerleading. Okay. And it's a... It's quite funny because I was like, Mom, I need to fly like that. Like, I need to do that. Mm -hmm. And she's like, we're in North Bay. What are we going to do in North Bay? Mm -hmm. So, well, lo and behold, um, she found a program in yeah. North Bay. And uh, ever since then, I just, I fell in love with it and kept going. Won a few national championships. And Now, so as somebody who grew up watching Bring It On, did you watch Bring It On as well? Yep. Okay, so for two of you who have grown up watching, you know, watching Bring It On and then you went into competitive cheerleading, I'm curious, super serious question. Was there ever a time when you were ever in a competitive cheerleading competition and somebody said, bring it, and you said it's already been brought? Can't say I've ever done that. Yeah. <laughs> it's never actually happened. Can we do that right now? Can we reenact that scene right now? Wait, that's okay. That was not what we have to say. Okay, I'm going to say bring it, and then you say one of you. One of you with attitude. It's already been brought. Who wants to do it? Not it. <laughs> I'll do it. Okay. Okay, hang on. i got to get in character. Bring it, girlfriend. It's already been brought. Nice. Nailed it. Okay. Nailed it. You got this. <laughs> Thank you. You got the attitude done. There you go. There you go. I love it. Um, okay. So, uh, obviously, you, you ladies do stuff outside of, 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 of your work with the Red Blacks. Uh, Danielle, what, what else do you, do you have going on right now? Um, well, I go to university out of town, um, and I study science there. Okay. And I also work on a farm, so I love animals, working with animals. It's really fun. Very cool. So your university has a football team, mm -hmm. um, and you, you cheer for them as well? Yes, I do. So what, what do you find are the differences between cheering at the university level and cheering cheering for the Red Blacks? Like, what are some of the things that stand, that stand out to you as, as being a little different? Um, well, there's definitely a smaller audience. Okay. Um, so it's kind of less pressure to, if you mess up, like there's less people watching you. Um, and there's also like a different range of ages at Red Blacks games, whereas at university games, it's like all people my age. Okay. So I really like taking pictures with the little kids at the games and just seeing how excited they are. And you don't really get that experience at the university games. Okay. Um, yeah, but it's still really exciting. And both, uh, both types of games is really fun. Now, go going back to school in the fall, do you think there's going to be pressure from your cheer team in terms of, okay, now because you, you're at this, you know, this new level, you know, train for a professional team that you're going to have to come in and, like, like up your game? Or? Yeah, I have a feeling. My, <laughs> my uh, coach from my university team, he came and watched the home opener. Okay. Um, so that was a little bit of pressure on me to do well. Um, but it went well. But I, I feel like, uh, yeah, I'll start being a leader for football games now Excellent. since I have a little more experience with that. Excellent. Rupa, what do you got going on? Um, so I work full-time okay. um, at a dealership. Honda, I don't really mind saying. Okay. Um, hey, Canada Honda. Oh, sales um, have just spiked. <laughs> Sale, you know what you've just done? Sales have just spiked to Canada Honda. People are <laughs> going to be coming in buying cars, and they're going to ask you to, like, you know, cartwheel before they sign the papers. That's what you've just done. Okay. Well, you know, I actually work in the service department, so they're I'm actually helping. They're going to before their oil changes. <laughs> they're they're going to be so excited. Okay. <laughs> Um, so my main job, um, I am the customer service specialist. Okay. So I call people all day long, make sure that they're happy. And it's not cold calling, it's more um, calling people who've been in for service okay. to make sure that they're like they're doing okay, the car is doing okay, make them happy somehow if they're mad. Okay. Um, I didn't say that out loud. Right. And uh, so I have that going on. I also serve in a restaurant uh, okay. part-time, uh, evenings and weekends. Um, I'm kind of a workaholic, okay. so I like I enjoy being that busy. And uh, then there's cheerleading, but that's not really a job. It's just like my hobby, and I love it. 
So <laughs> you're both very busy. You both have a lot going on. How do you guys find the time to fit in, you know, your commitments with, with the Red Blacks? Because, again, it's not just the game. It's the practices before. It's community events. Like, how do, how does, how, how do you guys balance all of that? Um, it's definitely been a challenge for me. This has been my busiest summer in a long time. So, um, but it's usually pretty regular. We have a pretty regular schedule, and we know all the uh, football games in advance. Okay. So it's manageable. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Um, it's all about prioritizing your time. Um, when I like growing up again, like I always had to manage a job, cheerleading, and school. And now it's kind of like I'm managing two jobs in cheerleading because like school is a job in its own sometimes. Yeah. Um, so it's, I've always had to like balance those three things and I've always made time in my schedule for it. A lot of people say, oh, I don't have time to do this. And it's like, oh, you do mm -hmm. just talk to your bosses, yeah. talk to the, talk to your support staff. Like you have that flexibility, but you'll never know if you don't ask. Okay. Um, and I'm a very big believer on being like, I need to do this. Can you help me? Yeah. Then, do you yeah. use that voice too? Cause who can say no to that voice? <laughs> I use that voice sometimes. Yeah. I sometimes. Think, guys can't do that. Guys can't like, all of a sudden, hi, can you help me? Can't do that. So, so, oh, no. so. I do so it first cause I'm like, I'm really short. Yeah. <laughs> it just works out for me. Yeah. Um, Manage for us. I want to ask you ladies. So obviously, you know, you've been, you've been, we've had, I think three home games now. Um, you see how the fan reaction is. To, to, to you to you ladies and gentlemen to the team you've done the community events how are you how are you embracing this role of role model that you that you're in now because you know we've talked about it before a lot of the a lot of the little girls and little boys who come to the game see you when you know you're 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 dressed you know you're all dressed up you're going on the field you're doing things that you're very passionate about and you know they're 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 in the seats tugging at mom tugging at dad and being like I want to do that like how 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 is that been for you guys like embracing that that uh, the whole fact that you know you're your role models for, for 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 people it's a great feeling um actually i've never really felt like a role model being like the youngest sibling okay i'm the young, youngest sibling of four so you're the baby of the family yeah. me too so <laughs> you the baby mm -hmm. right. okay <laughs> so yeah i never had really had that feeling like i was like the role model for like a little sister or brother so it's, it's kind of different for me but i really like it i like seeing that i'm making a difference in the little kids' lives and making them want to be like me. Mm -hmm. uh, for me, oh, again, I'm the youngest in the, in the family. Um, I only have one brother. Um, but being a role model has always been a big deal to me. I used to coach uh, girls who were 8 to 12 and always, like, I guess throughout my lifetime or my cheerleading experience, I've always had to kind of either be a leader or kind of be that person that everyone looks up to or that that second mom that kids can go to. So like going to games and things and you know seeing all the little girls being like, oh I want to be just like you and I say, you know what, you can do it. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You can do it. Because I was that I was that kid um, watching football with my dad yeah. when I was about five, six years old. And I was like, Dad, I'm gonna be on TV. Yeah. I'm gonna be on a field like that one day. Yeah. And lo and behold, I am on a big field. Uh, yeah. You know, cheerleading for his favorite sport. So. It's so funny because we have that in common because I started off watching football with my father. I didn't say that I was going to be on TV, but I have been. It's more so the big screen <laughs> yeah. where they pan the crowd, whereas, whereas you guys are, you know, are, uh, are, are, are a huge fixture. And it's so awesome because I was at the game last week and we were there early and it was seeing you guys come through the concourse and everybody coming down as a team. It's just awesome because I've had the opportunity of coming to practices and talking with you guys like at, at, at different events but seeing you guys live doing what you do just warms my heart because you're absolutely all amazing at it so it's it's mm -hmm. it's great um do you find uh cheering in front of like twenty four thousand ish people is that challenging do you just block it out or yeah i try not to think about it um, okay. usually when i perform like when i did it competitively the lights were so bright, like I couldn't even see anyone. So okay. when I perform, I'm kind of in that mindset that like no one's looking at me, I can't see them. Yeah. Yeah. Um. Keep saying, oh, sorry. That's I okay. I would say like going out in front of a crowd of twenty four thousand people or the very first game, uh, for sure it was it was a little overwhelming, but it almost felt like home. Like this is where I should be. Um, I always said, as a just growing up, really, I always said, you know, the stage, the stage is my home. Mm -hmm. This is this is my stage. Well, I guess this is my field now, right? Mm -hmm. um, I'm like hours. Yeah. yeah. Um, Touch me. So I, I feel like you know, going up in front of twenty four thousand people, seeing all those people smiling back at you, it makes it makes it easy. It yeah. makes it so fun and exciting yeah. and warming. 
And here's the awesome mm-hmm. thing about the role that, that you ladies and gentlemen are in, is that the majority of the games that you do, because I think you might do an away game, I'm not sure, but assuming all the games that you do are home games, <clears throat> you're always going to be in front of the home crowd. It's not like the football team where they go to another city and they're booed. No. You're always going to be in front of the home crowd. And even if you were to go to another city, even if you were going to do a road trip to Hamilton, Montreal, Toronto, nobody, nobody with half of a brain would ever boo a cheerleader. It's just, you just don't do it. It's one of those unwritten rules of, 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 of football. No, I've never seen that happen before. Oh. That person, if they, if they did that, they would be like booed out of the stadium by their own fans. You just don't, you just don't do it. Mm-hmm. Um, it's good to know. Yeah. yeah. So, yeah, makes sense. Yeah. Part they're they're like courage, courage, not yeah. <laughs> We're going to be coming up to rapid fire questions in a moment, but before we get to that, I know that we've got a big lumberjack game, which is coming up August the 7th. Montreal Alouettes are coming to town. We beat them already this season, so I feel good about our chances. Um, I know the big thing is it's a plaid-themed game. Are you, are you ladies and gentlemen going to be wearing plaid for the game? Do you know? Uh, Can you I'm say? I'm not allowed to say. Okay, then don't say. Don't say. No, no spoilers. <laughs> no, no No spoilers. No um, There's definitely some surprises for sure. Okay, I'm looking forward to it. Now, big news today. The Ottawa Red Blacks website has been updated I don't think it has all of your bio information, but all of your profile, like all of your headshots are on there. Mm-hmm. You heard about this, yep, right? Yes, haven't seen it yet. Okay, okay. <laughs> so I want to issue a warning, so excuse me for one second. Ladies and gentlemen, please, please, if you are driving a car, first of all, you shouldn't be using your cell phone. But please, if you are crazy enough to use your cell phone while you're driving, do not bring up the Ottawa Red Blacks cheer and dance team and start looking through the profile pictures. It is a very beautiful team. Very beautiful women, very handsome yeah. men. Very beautiful women, very handsome men. You could crash. As a matter of fact, I heard there were three instances of automobile accidents in the city of Ottawa today just based on that website. Do you, really? you hear about that? No, I, I did not hear about that. Yeah. I'm not sure if that's true. I kind of just made it up, but I could see it happening. Yeah, I feel like so, you're so, it so please be careful. So it's awesome. So one of the things is that for you know people who know me on the team that I've been talking to know that one of my goals has been to memorize everybody's name. I believe there's 46 members. I'm confident if you lined everybody up, I'm getting at least 43, 44. And by the end of today, it'll be a full 46. I'm gonna come to practice soon and prove it. So I'm very excited. Um, so we're gonna do rapid fire questions. Are you guys ready? Have I told you about what these questions are? Nope, no, they're just random questions. They're just random yeah, rapid fire know. questions. Yeah. They're very, okay, they're, they're, they're very easy. Mm-hmm. So I'm gonna ask, a question and then both of you will have a chance to answer it okay this is this is the quickly becoming one of the fastest game shows in Ottawa it's very exciting okay first of all what is the last movie that you saw in the theater Pitch Perfect 2 okay Magic Mike 2 <laughs> Magic Mike 2 all right fair enough fair enough Pitch Perfect 2 is a very popular one you're the, <laughs> you're the first no no she's just admitting it you have you seen that movie Not yet. Not yet? So, oh, see, you said not yet. See, not so innocent. Yeah. All right. Um, what is, this is kind of a two-parter. What is the last concert that you saw, slash, if it isn't this one, what would be your dream concert? Um, I just went to Keith Urban. So okay. good. At Boost Fest. Okay. So good. And would that be also your, was that your dream concert, or who would your dream concert be? If you could see My any artist. My dream concert, probably Britney Spears. Britney Spears? Okay. <laughs> I've never been to a concert. Like ever? Ever. Ever, ever? Ever, ever. Okay, so that's fine. You've never been. What would your dream concert be? Oh, dear. I'm going to get booed for this. I don't There's like, no booing on this I show. I don't like live music. Oh, okay. Um, I just, I'd rather listen to it on a radio or speakers. Um, but if I had to pick one person yeah. to go see live, it would probably be Luke Bryan. Okay. All right. Yeah. Okay, cool. Mm-hmm. Cool, cool, cool. All right. Tell me an interesting quirk about yourself. You go first. Yeah, we're going to be here all day. If I Just have one, like... one simple fun quirk. Uh, one quirk. Oh, I wrap my chicken wings in bacon. You wrap your chicken wings in bacon? Yep. So and you... I skewer them and deep fry them and put hot sauce on them. Okay. Yes. So this is what you do at home. When you go out, do you re- request that? No, or? they're not going to do it if you request it. Okay? Really? They don't know who you I work, are? I work at a wing place. Okay. Just, All right. They won't do it. Okay. <laughs> Good to know. It's okay. I just do it at home. Do you, okay, let me ask you this. While you're thinking about it, of course, because I see, I see you're struggling. So now I'm going to go on this for a, little, for a, little, for a moment <laughs> longer. Are you a one-hand or a two-hand wing eater? Two. You're a two. I'm a one-hand wing eater. Uh, my, uh, my buddy taught me back in the day. 
Always leave one hand free so you can shake hands. Somebody comes over the table, hey, how you doing? So I'm a one hand guy. But there's no right or wrong answer because you're at the end of the day reading wings. Exactly. I'm just kind of like, yeah. um, I hope that everyone that I'm, eating, that I'm eating wings, or everyone that I want to meet is with me eating yeah. wings at that point. Although, the other fun thing I heard today was, so you know the Apple, the, the iPhone, they've got the Touch ID. And uh, one person was saying that he uses his pinky as one of the sign-ins. Because, you know, you can do multiple figures. He says, because of a meeting wings, my pinky's free. So I thought that was funny. <laughs> Danielle, how are you doing over there? Uh, you're going to think this is terrible. That's all uh, I can think of. There's no right or wrong. Um, I don't like the crusts on uh, my bread, my sandwiches. Really? Yeah. You know it's pretty, what? Com pretty common. <laughs> right now, there's a guy that I work with that is all excited because he gets teased a lot because he always cuts the crust off of his... Uh, his bread at work, so yeah. Or like not just at work, but wherever he, wherever he is. So that's cool. There's nothing wrong with that. Uh, you know what? That ends today's session of rapid fire questions. Just a couple of quick ones. Painless, right? Yeah, that's what I'm saying. Ladies, um, before we go, is there anything uh, anything that we haven't talked about that you want to mention while we're here? I think we're good. We've got uh, we got the game exactly. coming up on August the seventh. You know, people are asking me all the time. You know, Keith, these. You know, these, these these lovely people keep coming over to your house. How can I see them? The answer is simple. You head down to TD Place. You get yourself a ticket. You check out the best action in town. The Ottawa Red Blacks will be, check, will be taking on the Montreal Alouettes on August the 7th. It is a lumberjack game. We're not exactly sure what the surprises are, but if these ladies say they're surprises, believe me, they're going to be awesome. So you're going to want to make sure that you check it out. From the bottom of my heart, Danielle, Rupa, I thank you so much for taking the time to uh, to come out today and to chat with me. You have something there? It's time. Oh, okay, get ready, get ready. Ladies and gentlemen, thank you so much for checking out this blog. Make sure you uh, do everything you can to support this lovely cheer and dance team. They're phenomenal. Um, my name is Keith. Thanks for, uh, for coming out, and that's my view from the 40.